Just want to end a little bit talking about if you've got this way of recovering depth, how do you represent depth? That is, how do you think about the representation of it? We only actually talked about disparity. We, we talked a little bit about depth images, but not too much. But I want to talk about just two quick methods here. One is a depth image. And then there's a slightly more, I, I use the word nuanced, uh, a little more recent notion of representing de depth, namely point clouds. So depth images, uh, as shown here, uh, this was another one of those stereo figures from the Middlebury data, uh, stereo data set. And this is a ground truth known depth image, right? So you see these rings here, right? Well, you see that this one's darker and brighter and brighter. They're, they're at different depths. Likewise, this picture here is this picture there. It's brighter than this mannequin back there because it's closer. And if we had more grayscale resolution, you would see this would be darker than, than, than this area because the nose is further back from the cheek. So depth images have some nice representations. First of all, I've got depth everywhere, right? I can just go to every pixel and say, what's your depth? What's your? So I've got a full dense depth representation. Something that's a little more subtle is that a depth image not only tells you it's two meters from here to that table, it also tells me that between here and that point is free space. So it doesn't just represent the surface, it also represents by default, if you will, that there is no stuff between here and there. Right? So the putting the point down there is also declaring that the ray from my eyeball to that point is free. So it's a representation both of the surface and of free space. People don't make nearly enough use of that fact, uh, but it's true and important. The other thing is often we need to think about depth discontinuities. Well, depth discontinuities are just edges in the, in the depth image. And we're, we have lots of processing for dealing with uh, images. There are, of course, disadvantages. One is that it's very viewpoint dependent, right? I've got this scene geometry, but my depth image is based upon where my camera is. So if I move over here, I've got a different depth image. And combining them is difficult because they're in the reference frame of my image. They're not in sort of some natural reference frame uh, that talks about the object. So it doesn't capture the geometry quite so much. And the other thing is, if I want to think about reasoning about the geometry, I kind of need to know where the camera is with respect to this in order for me to talk about where the geometry is.